keep coming for the travel industry. Travelers out from under the weight of the pandemic are looking to book their spring break and their summer vacation getaways, but President Biden is warning that his administration's ban on Russian oil imports will inevitably bring Americans some pain at the pump, and that means there will also be pain at the airline ticket counters. Peter Greenberg is here now to bring us the latest on the industry. Peter, good morning. Always great to see you. Uh, let's begin with the price of regular gasoline. It's increased by 10 percent since since Russia invaded Ukraine, it's up again today. How bad is this demand uh, in the travel agency right now, industry? Well, here's the problem. I'm actually in California this morning. I refilled my car yesterday, $6.09 a gallon. That is, uh, it's almost untenable, and yet we're gonna see prices go up even higher. And of course, that translates down to airline ticket prices. About a week and a half ago, we were talking about airline ticket prices going up at about 7% every 10 days. That was not unusual because it was demand was increasing because we're getting closer to spring break and summer vacation. Now with the fuel surges, we're talking about 20% higher than last week and probably another 10% higher next week. And this is going to be going on probably through the end of Memorial Day. Wow. Um, and, and we'll see the jet fuel costs reflect that right away, as you just said. Um, when is it going to end up in the consumer's ticket prices? Well, what most people don't realize is that airlines update their fares and their computer systems about 200,000 times a day, so they can pivot quickly, and it's already started to happen because of those prices going up. Some of the low fare carriers might be able to handle it a little bit easier only because their cost structure is lower. It's the legacy carriers like American, United, and Delta that are going to have a real problem here because they're going to try to match the fares that are already low with the low fare carriers and their cost structure really won't allow them to make a profit at all. So their second quarter projections are not looking good. Mm. And we're already seeing the effects of the routes and prices at some of the airlines, uh, some of the U.S. airlines, as you just mentioned, cutting their flights already altogether. Uh, Reuters is reporting Allegiant is cutting back 5 to 10 percent of its flights in the second quarter. Alaska cutting 5 percent. You're expecting more of this, right? We are. In fact, it already started at the end of last year because you had another perfect storm here where the airlines were already overscheduled and understaffed. Remember that pilot shortage, it hasn't gone away. So American last year cut 27 routes, Delta cut 10, United last week cut 17 separate flights. This is going to continue because they can't support it. Now add that to the fuel charges and you're going to see a lot of secondary and tertiary cities in this country either with very reduced service or in some cases no service at all. But one airline, before I let you go, is actually expanding in the middle of this uncertainty. You found them, of course, Breeze Airways doubling its route. You spoke this week with the company's CEO, who also founded JetBlue, and we have a clip of that. I'm feeling positive. People are traveling again. I was with some you know, airline executives over the weekend, and they were all saying that their bookings were as strong as they've ever seen them in March. So... Uh, you know, now it's, you know, there's going to have to be some adjustments for the for the higher fuel prices. But thank goodness uh, this H-20 that I'm on board here is very fuel efficient. And so, you know, we got to charge about five bucks more per hour of flight per customer. You got them in a plane, too. That's pretty impressive. So five dollars more per person per hour on their flights. Uh, is that all we can expect to see or is the worst yet to come? I'm afraid the worst is yet to come because it's going to translate all the, also into rental cars and cruise ships. Cruise ship lines are already saying they're they're considering surcharges. I'm not going to be surprised if that happens. It's happened before. And rental cars, get ready because if you thought it was expensive to rent a car because of the, the law of supply and demand, the fuel charges there are going to get wild. Whatever you do if you rent a car, make sure you bring it back with the fuel tank full because as of today, the car, the cost of having an, a rental car company refuel your car is ten dollars per gallon. That will probably go up to twelve or thirteen dollars a gallon. Ugh, that hurts. All right, Peter. Thank you. I usually ask you where in the world you are, but you already told us you're in California. We appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. And still ahead, in an exclusive News Nation poll, 72 percent of Americans support President Biden's sanctions against Putin. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.